mind blown. UA has just released native versions of some of the most popular UAD plugins. They're called UADX, and we're going to take a look at them next. So all the UADX stuff is handled by a software called UA Connect, which if you own one of the new Volt interfaces, it's using the same kind of system. So I'm just going to launch UA Connect here. And it's going to search for plugins, see if there are any updates or anything like that. Um, this is all authorized to my setup already. You've got virtual instruments and stuff. Um, but then, of course, the pride and joy, the UAD plugins. So here we have the 1176 collection. We have all three of those in there. We have the API 2500 bus compressor. We have the API vision channel strip, and that's the new one, the Mark II, if you will. Um, we have the Roland Space Echo. We have the Lexicon 224, Neve 1073, and of course that's the Mark II as well. We have the Pure Plate Reverb, which is, you know, kind of a loosely based on the Plate 140, or EMT 140 as it's known. Um, the Studer, and lastly, we have the three LA-2As, well, LA-2s and LA-2As. So, lots of cool stuff in there. So far, there's no Ocean Way or anything like that. I think UA is kind of focused on the products that already have Retina graphics, because that probably simplifies what they do, but I'm just kind of guessing there. Uh, but I sure would like to see Capital Chambers and Ocean Way ported as soon as possible. Um, hopefully that's in their plan. And that's pretty much it. So now, one of the questions that everybody's going to have is are these M1 native. And uh, I'm going to launch Studio One and uh, also Activity Monitor, and let's take a look. Okay, so I'm just going to go in and insert one of the UAD plugins here. And uh, I'm just going to go with the Vision. And the reason I'm selecting the UAD plugins is because I know that they are M1 only. So we're going to look in here, and if we don't see any sort of AU helper or anything that says Intel over on the right, then we know that this is actually running natively rather than through Rosetta. So now, I'm going to launch UADX, API Vision there as well. Uh, it looks basically identical, slightly different fonting or something, but really close. And I don't see, oh, there it is. AU Hosting Compatibility Service Studio One Intel. You can see it shows Intel there on the right. So, unfortunately, these are not M1 native. So they are running in Rosetta, at least for the time being. But hey, we're getting a big win just having native. And just to confirm, I'm just moving these over here and putting them side by side. And in theory, when we kill the UADX, it should stop that host process. And sure enough, that host process is gone. So definitely not M1 native yet. But as you can see here, UA Connect is M1 native already. And so is console. And so let's take a quick look comparing a couple of these. So I have a Studio One session opened up with a 1073 and I'm just adding a UADX 1073 alongside. And as you can see here, they are basically identical looking, um, other than some menu differences. So we're going to actually try to copy some settings and paste between the two units. And perfect. That was totally successful. So copy and paste from UAD to UADX. Perfect. Thumbs up. And now let's take a look at the preset functions also here. I'm just going to search guitar. Actually, I'm just going to browse. Bass boost. Let's make that a favorite. And let's see if it shows in favorites. It does. So really simple. Good preset management. Now, one thing that would be convenient but doesn't exist is any way to toggle between the DSP 
and the native versions. Um, I don't know if UA will ever come out with that. There's probably not much demand for it. It'd be cool if it was there, but I'm not really bummed about that. And if you look down at the bottom below this video, you'll see this little thumbs up icon. That's a good thing. Go ahead and smash that, please. It uh, helps me make more videos like this. So now I'm switching into Pro Tools for some more extensive comparisons here. And for some of this, I'm going to need some headphones. Okay, so for this, I'm going to switch to console view. We're going to put a few tracks in here. I'm going to start with just a couple um, mono tracks. And first thing we're going to compare is the latency. So I'm going to pull out one of the, uh, let's pull the 2500. That's the UAD version. We can see that it has 1,079 samples of latency down here. Let me pin that. And uh, this 2500 UADX was one of the later ones added. I actually have not put it through its paces yet. There it is, GUI, pretty much indistinguishable. All right. So now if I do live track on the UAD version, there we go. You can see they are now 55 samples. So exactly the same latency, just like we were hoping for. That means they should be phase accurate. So let me just switch view here. I'm just gonna drop in an audio file of some kind. And we're going to hear both versions. I'm actually going to also put a trim. Put it on both. But I'm going to flip the polarity on one of these. And we hope that they'll actually cancel each other out. OK, copy those settings. Paste them into the other one. Okay, now I'm going to flip the polarity on one. We have a full no, complete cancellation. So this is absolutely identical to the UAD version. Let me just grab a tiny section here and loop it so we can hear it repeatedly. And I'm just going to bring that's without phase. Now flip the phase again. Nothing at all. Perfect phase cancellation, perfect null. And of course, one of the other things that has kind of driven us a little bit crazy as UAD users over the years is how slow mixdowns tend to be. So let's do a mixdown comparison. I have 24 tracks in this session, and all of them have some UAD processing. As you can see, I'm using pretty much my entire quad. And here in Setup, if I go to Playback Engine, I'm at 32 samples, and I have Dynamic Plugin Processing disabled. That way it's always using the most CPU, which is the only way to be fair. Okay, so let's grab this. I've just selected everything, and I'm going to bounce it down. So I'm getting just a hair faster than real time, which is honestly pretty slow. But up until now, that's been the price that we paid in order to use the UAD processing. Okay, so there it was. And now I'm going to switch the session so that everything is UAD X instead of UAD DSP. And I'm going to copy all the same settings and everything as I prep it. Okay, so at this point, I don't have any original UAD plugins. That's just the amount of DSP that's used by console, about 7%.
So there's our CPU. And again, this is on an M1. We're hovering 16-ish eh, percent. But now, let's record enable. Because that's really when the low buffer comes into play. And we want to be as fair as possible. I'm going to set one of these as the master, just so there actually is something coming in for all the other tracks to record. So, that is pretty impressive. Um, about the highest spike ever was in the low 30s. That's a 24 tracks, something that was maxing out my quad. But then again, this is an M1, so this is a really powerful system. On an Intel system, we probably would be over 50% CPU usage at this point. So all in all, I have to say I am super impressed. And now, let's take a look at how fast the mixdown is. Set it to UADX, and bounce. And that's looking pretty great. Roughly eight times the speed. Not quite, but almost eight. Between seven and eight times the mix down speed versus the DSP versions. And that is awesome. And so let's just see how much CPU usage there is if we use the 1073, which is one of the heavier DSP consuming plugins instead of the API. So, no doubt about it, these are pretty heavy-duty plugins, and this has given the M1 a good workout, and we're getting some spiking in the CPU. But part of that is because I have the screen recording active. So, pretty impressive. Again, the spikes are actually because I'm screen recording, um, and they want one of those interrupts once in a while, and that's why we get those little spikes. So I kind of look at the overall average. So, these U80 plugins are no joke even on an M1 processor. They are uh, pretty CPU intensive, but manageable. And there are a few disadvantages here. For example, there's no gain control on the Studer, so you can't link them like you can on the UAD DSP version. For right now, there's a relatively small selection. And for right now, there's no M1 native support. But I think that's about it as far as disadvantages go. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm hoping to see things like Oceanway and Capital Chambers in the near future. Um, I don't have any inside info that that's happening, but I, I hope it is. But at least we have the big five. We have API, Neve, Studer, the LA-2As, the 1176s, and I'm sure there's more to come. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave me a like and a comment. And as always, Matt Hepworth, see you next time.